Now, before we start diving deep into the code, uh, let's first go to the documentation and see exactly what is required uh, when making a connection to AWS IoT Core while using the custom authentication, right? So in case of using MQTT, what's required is that one, the username should contain the custom authorizer name. So this is what uh, we saw, right? Uh, before uh, in the CloudWatch logs. So here is exactly what we've done. So we have created a user ID where we have added the custom authorizer name. Cool. And if you're going to be using a token signature, you need to add the token name as well, uh, as well as the uh, token signature. Cool. Next is that uh, when devices are connecting to AWS IoT Core by using MQTT, and custom authentication must connect on port 443. And if you're going to be connecting via 443, but in fact, you want to use MQTT, you need to set the ALPN protocol with the value of MQTT. So this is where we have set it. ALPN protocol name called MQTT, right? So these are the two major modifications that needs to be done if you're going to migrate your code that is currently publishing to an MQTT broker like Mosquito over to using AWS IoT. So these are pretty straightforward, small changes. Lastly, uh, since we haven't created the custom domain right now for IoT, we will be using the AWS IoT endpoint. But in the next step, we will go ahead and change that as well. So uh, just a bit of background where this piece of code came from. I actually referred to this blog and here they have uh, created a piece of code uh, that uses port 443 and ALPN protocol to talk to AWS IoT, but it uses um, certificates for authentication. So I altered this code uh, to use username and password, removed ALPN protocol section, and then used it for my Mosquito broker. Then uh, I added the ALPN protocol section back, uh, made the few changes that were required by uh, the documentation, and then started to use uh, that for AWS IoT. So let's uh, compare them side by side. So here we have uh, the, the parameters for connecting to Mosquito. We have the endpoint, we have the URL, which is made using the endpoint. We got the username, we got the password, we got the client ID, and we also got the CA file that we created. Uh, if you want to learn more how I did all of this, I highly recommend you to go watch my previous video. We got set the topic and we got set the port, right? In the SSL parameters, we are only using the CA file uh, to create the context. We are not using the ALPN protocol as was mentioned in the blog, right? Now to port this over to IoT, here is the parameters that were changed and altered. So I've actually added it into a different section and then commented out the ones that were not useful anymore. So here I altered the endpoint. I added the ALPN protocol name and then here I've actually used it in the uh, SSL context. Next, uh, we added the user parameters. So we added the custom authorizer name to the user ID. So this was the username, and then we use the username to add the custom authorizer name. Next, we change the CA file. So this CA file was to communicate with the broker. This CA file is to communicate with AWS IoT. Next, we change the port from 8883 to 443 because now we are using the ALPN protocol. Cool, so in the next step, uh, please join me to create the custom domain name for AWS IoT. So essentially we will port this DNS name to point to AWS IoT. In this last step, we will use the configurable endpoints feature of AWS IoT to point the custom domain mosquito.theswapdeveloper.win, which is currently pointing to my custom mosquito broker and have it start pointing to the IoT endpoint, right? In that way, uh, our devices do not have to change the domain name. They can continue using that same domain name with the same username and password. Cool. So let's just quickly go to the documentation. It says that IoT Core uses the server name indication TLS extension to apply domain configurations, right? 
So this uh, SNI has to be sent by the client uh, when they are connecting, right? Uh, there's a few uses for uh, custom domains. The first one that we are interested in is migrating devices. But if you want to segregate your fleet, you know, uh, have your own brand name on the domain name, uh, these are also good use cases for using custom domain names. Also, uh, you can start uh, pointing that particular domain name to a particular authorizer. So we'll do that when we are setting it up to make sure that anyone who connects uh, with that domain name, they are pointed to the custom authorizer that we have created. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and configure. So in this section, uh, they have given steps if you have bought your domain name from AWS. However, in my case, I have bought my domain name from outside and I am managing the DNS in AWS, right? So this does not apply to me. I'll go forward and look at this step. So this one is more useful when we have a custom domain name that we have bought, but we've bought it from outside, not from AWS. Right here, uh, the first step is before creating a domain name, uh, we have to register our server certificates with ACM. Now, if you're buying from AWS, this is automatically done. But if you're buying from outside, uh, you have to have certificates in ACM. Luckily, uh, I already have that. So in order to create the custom domain name for my Mosquito Broker, I needed to have these certificates already created. So I already have the certificate for star.swapdeveloper.win. And we'll actually use this identifier uh, when we are creating our custom domain name. If you do not have that, uh, you can use externally signed CAs. So here are the steps for that here. And uh, if you have uh, signed by public CA or private CA, both steps are mentioned. Cool. And to create, uh, we need to make essentially this API call, where is it? Yeah, this one. So it says create domain configuration. We need to give the domain name. We need to give the service. So in our case, we have to use IoT data ATS because uh, we were using the ATS endpoint and the ATS uh, root certificate. Next, the domain name, right? Uh, next is the server certificate ARN. So ARN in ACM and also the validation certificate. Uh, this is optional, I think. This is only required uh, if you're using a private server certificate. Cool. Now, I don't want to make this API call via CLI. I'll actually go into AWS IoT settings and create it from the console. So I'll go ahead and create a custom domain name from here. Click on create domain configuration. I'll call it uh, custom auth underscore username and password. And then domain configuration. Right. Next, I will choose my authorizer. So this is the custom authorizer and I will disallow authorization override. So I am making sure that anyone who connects on this domain name that we will mention uses that authorizer that we just created. Okay. Let's add the domain name as well. So I'll go over here, copy the domain name and paste it over there. Next, we have to select the server certificate. So sort of server certificate is already listed and I leave this as blank because my server certificate is publicly signed. Create. Cool. Now this is enabled. Wait, it says server type as data. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I actually freaked out because I was assuming this would be data ATS, but going back to the documentation, it says when you specify data, uh, IoT returns the endpoint for data ATS. So that's fine. It's supposed to be data itself. Cool. Uh, next step uh, we have to do is create the DNS record. So we have to make this API call, uh, get the ATS endpoint, and then have our custom domain name point to this endpoint. So let's copy that. Go to our route 53, click on it edit the record, select CNAME, and set the value as our data ATS endpoint. Save. Cool, that's it. So now we have it. Uh, our custom domain name is now pointed to AWS IoT instead of my 
custom mosquito broker. So let's go back to our piece of code, change the name of the endpoint and start publishing. So this is the code where we are publishing to AWS IoT using username and password. And here I will comment out the section that defines the IoT endpoint and then uncomment the section where we define the mosquito endpoint. Also, I need to make a small change where I need to replace uh, where we are making that connect call. So this is okay. IoT endpoint, right? So I need to change it back to mosquito endpoint. So that starts using that. Let's save that. Close it. We'll also subscribe to this topic on IoT. All right. And then let's execute the code. Awesome. So now it starts to publish and we can see the messages showing up on uh, the test console. I'll also go back to the CloudWatch logs for the custom authorizer refresh and see we've got one more. So let's click over there and actually see the payload that is being sent. So here we can see the server name is now mosquito.swapdeveloper.win instead of uh, you know the ATS endpoint and the rest of it is the same. Uh, we've got the username with the custom auth name and password and then the password gets uh, decoded and approved and a policy is sent back. So everything is working absolutely perfectly, right? Um, you can find all the pieces of code that we've used in this video uh, in my GitHub profile. I'll leave the links down below. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I really hope this helps you migrate from your existing MQTT servers onto AWS IoT. Thank you so much for going through this journey with me. Like the video if I helped you out and subscribe for more videos.